Good evening and welcome to Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes weekly Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition live stream campaign. My name is Monty Martin, running our game as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Wilhelm von Kessel, the human swashbuckler rogue. And we're joined today by our very good friends. Jill Donitis, playing Veo Senya, the tabaxi gloomstalker ranger rogue. And Joe Gorman, playing Pluto Jackson, the human battle master. Thank you for joining us once again. If you're just tuning in for the very first time, welcome. We are the Dungeon Dudes, and Kelly and I post new videos every other Tuesday and every Thursday on our YouTube channel, where we cover advice for players and guides for Dungeon Masters. Uh, we... What else do we do? <laughs> <laughs> you can also join us on Tuesday nights when we record the campaign live on Twitch. You can check us out from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube and check us out as an audio only podcast as well. And we have a very special event happening right now because we are midway through our Kickstarter campaign for Sebastian Crow's Guide to Drakenheim. Kelly and I have produced a source book that is a bit of a companion slash follow-up slash new thing to our previous success on Dungeons of Drakenheim, where we produce a 5th edition compatible source book that expands the world of Drakenheim and introduces all new player options, including the Apothecary class, new subclasses for every class, and tons of new contaminated and dark magic inspired spells that you can use for any 5th edition campaign. So you can check that out. It's live now until uh, September 17th. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And uh, if you want to check out Apothecaries in Play, uh, we just posted on YouTube a Untold Tales of Drakenheim that features three different Apothecary subclasses in play for you to check out and give us feedback on the playtesting and uh, just see what the class is all about. So you can find us on Kickstarter or hit us up at drakenheim.com. With that, though. Shall we return to decide the fate of Drakenheim? Yeah, very well. Drakenheim is no more. The devastation which fell upon that accursed place left a kingdom in ruin. Now, horrors lurking in the haze grow ever more great and terrible. While simmering tensions between rival factions boil over, into outright war. The power of monarchs, mages, and priests hangs in the balance. Six unlikely heroes join forces to confront the coming chaos. They shall decide once and for all the fate of Drakenheim. <clears throat> Welcome back to the fate of Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, Wilhelm, Veo, and Paluto had dragged the decapitated head of Big Linda out of the ruins of Drakenheim, surviving run-ins with ratlings as well as strange constructed assassins who attacked the would-be king Wilhelm von Kessel. Now, as our heroes are limping out of the ruins of Drakenheim towards the edge, uh, to, back towards Camp Dawn, their prize firmly won in tow. What do you do? Uh, Wilhelm is a little worse for wear at this point. He did just have an assassination attempt on him, uh, which he did not fare very well in, in that battle. Um, seeing as everything targeted him and only him, uh, Wilhelm, I, I imagine, is actually propped up in the back of the cart as well, uh, <laughs> trying to recover, uh, like wrapped in blankets. Also, he left... He was he was affected by a magical anomaly, an arcane yes. anomaly. Um, so after he calms down from the horror of the mysterious shape, um, he's left slightly traumatized and patching up his wounds in the back of the cart next to the 
odd, decapitated head of the creature he kind of maybe helped kill. I think you also lost several more fingernails and toenails to some contamination. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yes. they're, they're all gone. Um, maybe a couple teeth as well. Um, my gold tooth fell out. I need to get it replaced again. Um, Can we recover it? Do we find yeah. it or does it get lost in the gravity? Did it yeah. like just, just? Oh yeah, it might have. <laughs> I imagine that you could just like. Actually, that might make it easier to find because it's floating in the air. Yeah, we're looking for the gold thing. Yeah, yeah. I um. But yeah, yeah Wilhelm looks object. sickly. Wilhelm looks very sickly. I imagine at this point, like he's missing teeth, fingernails, toenails. He's pale. He's lost a lot of blood. Uh, he's had mental strain because of magical anomalies. Uh, he needs a holiday. A very long holiday. I don't suppose he'll be coming back. No, he will. <laughs> well, Helm, you're looking a little worse for wear, but I have a feeling this is going to get worse before it gets better. Really? You you think that? Because uh, I don't think I can handle getting worse. <laughs> wow. Well, things in Drakenheim, too, tend to get that way. How? How do you two continue to survive in this city? You've been here the whole time. I I came here for a, a day and look at me. I mean, I think it's a... Uh, we stick together. Look at the repeater shot that's in Veo's chest. That was for you. I I, I know. Um, and, and the only way we do this is we do it as a team. Pluto, the... the, the the Jackson Three are one of the most formidable um, fighting groups uh, known to the the city uh, within the city walls. And are, are and we, we do the it Jackson together. Three? Yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, I would, I, I would, I would concede the uh, Veo and the Pussycats for now I, because of Veo's uh, heroic actions. But we, I, but come tomorrow, we reevaluate. Uh, Pluto, I am not a Jackson. It would, it would seem wrong of me to take up the Jackson mantle and 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 deem myself a member of of your group. And uh, you're woozy. You're delirious. Um, I think you're <laughs> glowing a little bit too. Um, my king, you must rest. And shh, and I place my hand. <laughs> I place my finger in your lips. Shh, shh. Sleep now. Sleep. Yes, that's it. And then. <laughs> One of your teeth. I, I poke one of your teeth out. No. Oh, oh. Well, what was that? What was that? Uh, nothing. You look fine. Ah, uh, you look great. You look great. Yeah. Uh, how many levels? How many levels of exo- of uh, contamination do you all have? I have two. Two. I think I have okay. one. I was able to. I think I got away with one. Okay. Um, so you will need all some recovery time once you get back to Camp Dawn. Um, and this time you'll have the, the experience that Wilhelm had, but all of you will be, uh, dealing with it. <laughs> um, so that said, um, you're able to drag the cart out, Pluto, with your formidable strength, dragging it along the rest of the way towards where the encampment, uh, is, and... Um, as as always, the hooded lanterns uh, and the patrolling soldiers of House Jackson, welcoming in their commanders and king, back into the the safety of Camp Dawn, where you are brought to your tents, and immediately the, um, and it's at this point that um, Elias Drexel and uh, Ophelia Reed turn to both of you, to to the group of you, and. Um, Ophelia Reed says, Well, now that uh, you've all made it back safe with your trophy, I can use my magic to preserve it and hopefully keep it from wiggling around anymore. But with the, with your hunt over soundly, I think it's fair that if you need me to tend to any of y'all, tend to your wounds, help you recuperate, I think it's fair for me to do so if you would like me to offer my services. I request services. Wait, before you. (laughs) Yeah, we have not finished the hunt. And I continue to wipe its blood under my (laughs) eyes. What what do we have to do? It's contaminated. Don't (laughs) lose. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's in my eye. Um, We 
we don't know what um, the paladins will go after next. And Big Linda might just be our current big trophy, but as we discussed before, we may need to return to the ruins and <gasps> seek something bigger. I do not think that he will be dissuaded from one encounter with uh, one negative encounter with the dragon. That's true. Flamekeeper Reed, if if we accept if they accept your aid now, that will be the end of their hunt. They will not be able to go back out there once once again. But if you but of course, we do have our apothecaries that I can send for to help you get rid of any of the contamination that is in your bodies but that will put you up for a couple of days you'll you might lose the if you you might have to decide whether you want to preserve the opportunity to go hunting again or risk more of the exposure to the contamination of Drakenheim. Pluto I I know what kind of a man you are and uh I know that you're just trying to well, rule number 96, stay true to yourself. And the Jacksons are by nature monster hunters, uh, the best in possibly all of the continent. But I, I don't know if I can join you on another bout through Drakenheim and survive and, um, I don't like to be selfish. It's not something I pride myself in, but I, I, I would prefer to survive Drakenheim uh, if possible. And I just feel, I know it's a gamble, but we placed our bets on big -ist, biggest Linda. Pretty big Linda. Yeah, I'd say... From my experience with fighting monsters, uh, this Linda was the biggest thing I've fought. Uh, maybe... Okay, actually, question. Would Big Linda be bigger than the Duchess when I fought her? Probably, yeah. The, and there, I think that was the biggest thing I fought. Um, yeah, okay. It's the biggest thing I've ever fought. Now, I've heard that there's crater worms that are bigger, and honestly, the dragon in Castle Draken, I think Big Linda was about as big. Not to mention the other issue of two assassination attempts, one much more successful, although not completely successful, but both... Lucretia Matthias attempted to uh, have her people m kill us, and these strange robot assassins that mm. we don't know yet who sent them were after me. I unfortunately have become a liability to this hunt, mm. and I apologize for that, but I think... We've thrown our chips in with Big Linda, but that's just my take. If I may, my king, the incident with the followers of the Falling Fire seems to have been a, a an attack of opportunity, if you will. I don't think, at least judging from that, that Lucretia Matthias dispatched them directly. It seems to be rather that they saw you and acted of their own accord. That's fair. But... I agree with you. These machines that were dispatched to destroy you, it seems very clear and concerning that that was the intent from the beginning. Mm. There is can. only one organization that I know of that could have produced such kind of machines. And that is? I would have thought it obvious. I just... I think I know, I just want to hear you say it, Elias. Ophelia Reed jumps in and she says, It's... It is clear that whoever sent them was definitely bought them from the Amethyst Academy. But... 
Drex but Commander Drexel. I wouldn't be so sure whether or not it was the Academy that sent him. After all, the Academy is in the business of selling ma magic items built from delirium. How do we know that these just aren't something that they sold to somebody else? Well, here's a question for you, Ophelia. Would the Amethyst Academy have insider information to be able to hear our private conversations where I, as the king, future king of Westamar, possibly, made an official statement that I was allied with you on the idea of destroying Delirium, which would jeopardize the entire Academy manufacturing would that twist their arm enough to do something as devious as an assassination attempt? Wilhelm, it's not a secret that you've de that you've declared your intention to destroy Delirium. You said that very openly in our negotiations with with the the Silver Order only a few days ago, and it only takes a well. We had trusted individuals in in, in that meeting. That kind of thing is not something that we're going to be able to keep quiet. So whether or not someone was watching our meeting or not, it seems to me that there's we can't really count on your choices and your decisions being secrets, especially when they affect these kind of matters. And there's a lot of people, not just the Academy, who could be upset with you for a variety of reasons. I think... Um... When we do go down for a rest, uh, I might have a few people I wish to have conversations with. Um, I think it's uh, best at this moment that uh, Eldrick and River are nearby. Mm. And I think it's important that we have a conversation with them about our intentions and just make sure that we are on the same side. Uh, Elias, Ophelia, and Pluto and Veo, uh, I trust all of your opinions on this matter. Uh, I know that it's a jump to say the delirium must be destroyed, but I see no other way to save this world, no better way to save this world. That's my opinion from what I've experienced, and it might be too late to backpedal on that now. What, do you, what are your thoughts on this? Well, we've seen the visions of what's going to happen if we don't. If we have to choose between no delirium or the world exploding. I'll choose no delirium. And I think a lot of people will choose that with us. If they know the truth. If they know what's going to happen. I, I mean, I think we've already made this decision. I, what I take away from this is we need to be more careful um you know we we walk openly with you and and you know pardon my candor but i i did not i don't think i've been following the the proper protocols uh when it comes to kingly protection um you going and shaking uh unknown <laughs> strangers <laughs> hands um uh, leaving you alone to uh, to monitor uh, <laughs> carts. <laughs> uh, yeah, these are all wild uh, security breaches uh, mm -hmm. in in the. And, and I'm sure Elias had to bite his tongue a few times. Um, Pluto, you're you're a prince of Caspia. I don't expect you to be my bodyguard. We are. We are all three of us are equals, and but I. I am the Lord Commander. Yeah, and I I'm, need to look after yeah. you. And, and it's Veo, the importance we, of the city. Yeah, we. we you need, need to, to survive on a short leash, <laughs> Veo, uh, especially when we're in the city. About your position as Lord Commander, I would like to have a chat with you about that at some point. Uh, okay. <laughs> um. Whoa, whoa, whoa! You save his life, and now he wants to have a conversation. I mean, hopefully it's... Is there a promotion? Yeah, I'm sure, yeah it's totally good. It's we'll, totally good. We'll talk. We'll talk, Veo. I, I just... Just when you said that, like, it just sounded like... Yeah, it sounded like... Like, uh, ominous. Like, I wasn't yeah. going to be Lord Commander. 
Pluto, Veo, you both were incredible in there, and I apologize. I I have a rule to lead lead by example, and I I I will go into battle every single time if that's what it takes. I will not stand by and let soldiers die on my behalf without me also showing that I would be on the front lines too. And to secure a win for us is the duty that I take upon myself to gain these alliances. And having trusted allies like you two with me is vitally important. So I hold no negativity towards you, Pluto, for your actions. I agreed to every step that we took in there. I'm also a man of manners. Another rule of mine, manners maketh a man. If somebody offers their hand to be shaken, I'm going to shake it. And unfortunately, being polite is a risk I'm willing to take. Well, you're not just a sword anymore. Yes. You're, you know, you, we don't need another mercenary. We need a king. That's what this place needs. And, 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 and I need to know that you, you're ready to step up. What do you, what do you think, Veo? Do you think he's, uh, he's playing the part? I think you have honorable intentions, and I think these rules were made for nobles, not for kings. And these as much as you were want, made by my father, who was king for me. He was the. Oh, he was a king. You're, he was a king of uh, von of, of uh, Castleholm. I, no, he was lord. He would have been a lord. I, I, so, I, I, that's yeah. kind of the same kind of thing. Elevating. I mean, I'm sure he's a great man. You know, I'm sure he's... Uh, he was a better man than King Ulrich was. <laughs> let me let me just say this, okay? Too many kings of Westamar have hid in their towers, making decisions for the people without being one with the people. I don't plan to make that mistake. And if securing alliances, fighting battles, making calls, I'm going to be here doing that. And nobody's going to stop me. I respect that decision. I I lead myself that way, Wilhelm. But we also have to be mindful that if something happens to you, you don't have an heir. We don't have a plan B. Well, sorry. Actually, we do. But we do sorry. We don't want to use the your plan nephew. B. We don't want to use not, the plan it's, B. It's a plan B. Like, it's a B minus, maybe. Not a B he's plus He's young. Plan, he's, so. he's inexperienced. He needs... You're the A-plus plan, and we can't afford to let that go. So just ask. We're not asking you to back off. We're just asking you to be mindful as the next ruler of this great place of Dragonheim. <laughs> Nevertheless, Wilhelm, it is worth mentioning that your life, you have a good head on your shoulders, and you shouldn't lose that. Don't forget, of course... There's, there's merit to leading from the front. Don't get me wrong. That, that you are a warrior, that you do take to the field, is something that the, the nobles and the people of this continent will respect. Some of the greatest monarchs of our, of our nation have been those who were willing to take to the field. But also some, some of the greatest fools. Think of Albrecht von, von Draken. I mean, he thought himself invincible. He had dragons fighting in his army. He was invaded Caspia at the head of one of the strongest hosts that Westmar has ever assembled. And he was beheaded on the battlefield by a scalebreaker knight. And unlike the Von Drakens, I have no plans to go to war with Caspia. I have no plans to go to war with Illyria. As far as I'm concerned, I am making alliances with those people. Pluto Jackson is a great friend of mine, and so House Jackson is a great friend as well. Mm. The Illyrians, we are make we are solidifying that alliance. Our problems lie in the heart of our own nation. And there will be people who believe in me, and I assume there will be people who don't, but I will do what I must 
to not make the same mistakes of those who have ruled before me. I will be a warrior, yes, but I will also approach this world with kindness and care, and I will trust those who I speak to. I will trust my allies, because I think through teamwork, we can achieve the unachievable. Another one of my rules, by the way. Very well. Then, in that case, Flamekeeper Reed, I don't think that the king and Veo and Paluto will avail your, themselves of your services. I'll see for our own apothecaries to be sent for, so that we don't violate the rules of our of our engagement. Nevertheless, if you do intend to return to the city and seek out another prize, you better make make a decision on how you're going to proceed from there. After that big speech, I will still say, going back, that uh, it might not be the greatest <laughs> idea to go back into the ruins with all the contamination we've suffered. But, Pluto, yeah. your thoughts? <clears throat> uh... <laughs> I feel a little uh, wishy-washy on that one. Um, no, I'm saying uh, uh, I, all I'm hey, going to rule. You're allowed. On the front, look, but I'm look. also losing fingernails and teeth as we speak, and there's blood pooling at my you got feet. Your hand. You got your whole hand. You can still stab. Look, I understand the concern. What I'm, what I'm saying is, is if there is uh, assassination attempts on your life, you should not be left alone. We should be betting things like gifts. Um, <laughs> you know, I know you have a rule about springing traps, which is fantastic. Maybe you just let us take over that rule for a while. Veo's, I spring uh, the traps. Veo. I also, I also have a rule forty-three. Except all gifts graciously. What do I do? <laughs> yeah, these rules are people. Them I, after I'm they've been sure. sniffed and or inspected. Someone Ugh. knows you very closely and is using these rules against you, mm. and they may or may not have also sent assassin robots. So I just need you to think like if you were in my shoes, what you would expect, how you would expect the other person to act. Someone that you are required to protect, someone that is integral to this entire alliance. And speaking of, you know this hunt as much as it is for my glory and honor which i am i am just i am just oozing at this point i'm <laughs> oozing glory and honor this this hunt is to to ensure we have we have the terms we need to 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 make this this alliance work if 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 we don't have this it it might all fall apart so if if you're willing to to bet your fingers and toes on Big Linda, then, then so be it, my king. But I need you to consider the possibility that Ulrich will not give up and may seek out a bigger prize. And if I lose that, we, I might lose one of my best friends. I his might, fingers and toes. Sebastian's head, fingers and toes. His more. head, his... We, we, we lose so much. Um, and... And I need you, if you're willing to go to the, all these risks for the common and for the little, I might need you to think a little bit bigger. Well, Veo, you're the, uh, the most streetwise <laughs> lived in Drakenheim. Mm. What prize is bigger than Big Linda? Well, we don't need a prize bigger than Big Linda. We just need to stack on top. So I'm thinking, don't go for the biggest next thing out there. Go for something that's a little bit more qual qu quantity than, qu than just quality. You know, you said it, it, it's the bigger the prize, but it's not necessarily. So, yeah, yeah. Big isn't always best. It's 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 really about the. So somewhere in the middle, because we also don't want to be 100, 100 Pigeon Larry. Yeah, yes, you never exactly. want to be a hundred pigeon, Larry. That guy. But a few minotaurs oh, might not be bad. Uh, hmm. You know, I'm sure there's some big baddies out there strolling the streets that we can. 
Look, I'm not saying don't rest, but I, I think I think you know we're all in do uh, in dire need of of some downtime. But uh, the clock is ticking. We have approximately four days uh, yes. to go, and um, we we might need at least two uh, to really get out there and uh, just like and, pad pad the numbers a little bit, you know? Yeah, yeah. Just like yeah, you really you know the I'm very add I'm some very mustard on the hot proud. dog. You know? of, of what we accomplished we've done some amazing work you two are incredible um but we, yeah we 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 just need i think we need to really tie the bow on it very well okay so the two of you are planning on returning to dragonine for another round of hunting so if we get healed by these healers yeah let's talk, can we uh, get the numbers yeah <laughs> so so how many days will it take to get rid of the contamination? So, um, if you have two levels of contamination, you'll trade those off for two levels of exhaustion. Okay. Um, and so, with one level of exhaust, so if you want to, it, it's up to you if you want to go adventuring with exhaustion, right? Um, mm -hmm. With only one level of, of exhaustion, you'll have disadvantage on ability checks, but with two levels of exhaustion, your speed will be halved. So um, it's probably pretty debilitating to go adventuring with two levels of exhaustion, but you could gamble on on just having one, depending on how much recovery time you want to give yourselves after having the contamination purged. Of so course, even if we give ourselves like one one day as like extra, would that be enough to get rid of two levels of contamination or two levels of exhaustion? Yes, because this is the you you've now successfully you you did camp out in the city so you, you basically you, you have five days or four nights right mm -hmm. so you've used one night of your five day uh, uh, total so you're you are on day two of the hunt and it ends basically end of day day five so mm -hmm. if you wanted to get rid of those two levels of exhaustion you would basically have you'd be back out adventuring on day four of the challenge and so you'd mm -hmm. have day four and day five to potentially bring in something else that's not bad we could do that where are you at? Uh, where's Wilhelm at in terms of uh, levels of contamination? I have two levels, so it would that would bring us to day four. So we could do a proper two day rest, maybe get a sense of where. Um, it, let's see if we can maybe see if Ulrich is uh, making headway or uh, Ur see if Uriel. Any rumors. Ur Ur Uriel. Oh, yeah. Uriel. Is it against Ur the rules to send out some scouts and maybe get some eyes? Technically, yes. Darn it. Okay. Maybe they just happen upon him. I'm even thinking for us to find something for us. Oh yeah, true. Maybe over the next two days we can deliberate on our next course of action. Just uh, mm. during the downtime, maybe begin to uh, pull together any of our known, our our hit list, our monster hunt list. I found it was always easier to make lists, um, and. Uh, you know, I, I did, you, you go like biggest to smallest, mm -hmm. um, or, um, I don't know, shortest name to longest name, whatever you want to do, but yeah, making lists. I'm thinking like, uh, heavy, like size, but not necessarily deadliness. Like if you balance those two things. There's a lot of theatrics in mm. the hunt. So like, you know, like if you can slam something down on like a table and it breaks, Oh, that just plays really well for the judges, um, especially something that has like a scary face. If you can kill it <laughs> and it has a scary face and it keeps the scary face. Oh, boy. Do we do we know of anything in the ruins? Because uh, I also don't want to go trouncing into the ruins blind looking for trouble. And because we'll find trouble, but a hundred rattlings is not the trouble I want to find, mm -hmm. nor do I want to find ourselves stuck in the deep haze uh surrounded by many monsters i would rather with big linda we had a plan we had a certain specific monster we were tracking and going after and i think that that would be important um again i think that big linda is a great prize and i do also want to address the assassination attempts and all of that hmm. um makes sense Fair, fair, fair. 
We have um, much debriefing to do because our trip into the city is probably faring very differently than Uriel's, where our hunt was interfered with by several people who want us dead. Who don't count as trophies, unfortunately. Oh, no, just you dead. They could have taken Mayor Veo. Yeah, just you. Yeah. Well, that said, if there is any word from how the Silver Order's party has fared, we'll relay it back to you. In the meantime, I think that you should rest and at least try to recuperate a little bit from uh, the events of the past two days. Yeah. Very well. Um... Would it be possible to have a private moment with Veo either before or after my rest? Of course. Veo, do you want me there for your private meeting, or are you good? <laughs> no, I'm okay. <laughs> I can't I'll, wait, I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll, 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 I'll let you be alone. <sighs> this is about saving your life because that was really hard for me, and I'm really glad I did it, but. <sighs> So the uh, two of you can can uh, discuss in Wilhelm's uh, royal tent, if you wish. Here we are in my tent. <laughs> yeah, because you do have a tent that is encamped yeah. on. It is probably what, it's one of the more well-appointed tents, Wilhelm. So it has sort of uh, it, it has been furnished. You have your armor stand. You have a nice bed and a chest of drawers and whatnot. And you do have, as part of your tent, a, there's a, a stove that keeps the whole thing warm. Um, there's been set up a, a little uh, um, closet with a couple of bottles of alcohol and wine. And there are serv there are a few servants nice. and squires that can bring some snacks. And yes. and in your in your tent. You can kind of imagine that in the royal tent, basically, there's one of those standing curtains that acts as the divider of the tent. So you have privacy for where your bedchamber would be in 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 the tent, um, and then the um, and then the other part of it, you would have like this sort of meeting room slash office that would have mm -hmm. a table with several maps laid out, several letters that have come your way, and anything. This this tent setup is something that has been traveling with you since you uh, left um le left all these various incursions so this is the then the standard setup and it, it, you always have guards posted around it as well cool yeah love Let's it see. Uh, really like snazzy digs <laughs> thank you uh it's actually nicer than uh, rudy's barn and i'm not used to it yeah. i'm still getting used to that uh, used to the clock tower to be honest i still get a bit weird in sleeping in a proper bed <laughs> yeah and in fact veo as as lord commander you would not have a tent that is as richly appointed as wilhelm's um but um the you would still have your own personal tent that would be that would be set up in a similar manner where you would have your own private sort of sleeping section that would be sectioned off and then a, a nice area where you can take your meals and if the thing is, is that very few of you are actually engaged with any of the paperwork <laughs> of, of your offices. Uh, so whatever you do with your, your desk spaces is fine for yourselves. But yeah, you both, you, um, each of you now at this stage, that would be standard practice for the troops to set these up for you as, as part of the command tent. Uh, so Veo, I just wanted to have a quick chat with you, um, about the mission that we just, uh, went on. Uh, I'm a man of honesty. So I'm going to be Thanks honest up. with you. Uh, when we set out on this mission, I was looking to sort of make a judgment call on you. I had plans to replace you as Lord Commander. It confused me what? that I didn't understand how the steward's daughter, who spent all of her life in the castle, would be the commander of the army for the king. It, it didn't... Not all of my life, actually. Most of my life I've been surviving on the streets. I understand that. I want you to know that I've changed my opinion. I am astounded at what you did on this mission. Not only were you an incredible hunter, an incredible tracker, you took actions to keep me safe. You were good to the Hooded Lanterns when we engaged with them. 
You were good at reporting information. You have a bit of an obsession with feeding them snacks, which maybe we have to work on. But for the most part, Veo, you you took an assassination attempt for me, and it nearly killed you. I couldn't ask for more in a Lord Commander, and I understand now why you were given this role. And I just want you to know that as hopefully your future king, that I would be honored to have you as my Lord Commander if you maintain the desire to hold that position for me. Wow, that... (laughs) Honestly, I thought you were going (laughs) to give it to someone, Rudy or something, because I was not feeling confident that you were confident in my... Uh, abilities, but um, you know what? Rudy, Rudy was in a very high consideration, I will let you know that, but I also think that when all of this is over, Rudy will probably want to return to her family, knowing her. Hmm. Forcing her to stay in Drakenheim as my Lord Commander, she would do it. And I would love to have her by my side, because I've never known any warrior better than her. And I can't exactly ask a Caspian prince or a wizard of the Amethyst Academy to be my Lord Commander. And from your actions, I I I feel like I can trust you more than I can trust most people, Veo. I appreciate that. I I think a lot of people just think I'm some weird cat on the streets that is obsessed with I mean, I am obsessed with food. But that comes from a deep-seated place of not having food for a long time, having to scrounge around. And I think you're right. I'm not great at tactical battle. I'm not great at leading an army. It's, I can learn, but I'm good about caring about the people of Drakenheim. I'm good about caring about this city. And for 15 years, these soldiers who are under my command have given everything for the hope of the city being returned, for the hope of having a king that's going to lead them. And I can say at least, you know, if I can give them a good meal, that might be their last. I want to make sure that it's a good meal. I want to make sure that they are taken care of. So I thank you for letting me continue to take care of the people of the city. So you will continue to be my Lord Commander then? As long as I have breath in these lungs, but you know that I'd give it up for you. I want to thank you, and I want to repay your actions. So I want to make a promise to you, Veo. Johann Eisner is trapped in that castle. I've seen it myself on a different plane, but I have seen it. And I promise you I will do everything in my power to save your father. And I will have you by my side when I do it. All I can ask is Mm. whether, whether he makes it out of this or we can save him. All I ask is that we try. And you'll have my loyalty forever just by trying. So thank you. Thank you. I do my salute. (laughs) As these two have their heart to heart, Pluto, what do you want to do around the camp? (laughs) I, I'm, I'm so, so lost with Oveo, just like wandering around. Like, because, you know, we've, it's especially in Drakenheim. I have no Sebastian, no Veo. I'm just like, what do I do with myself? I'm just going to like, hey, you keep uh, keep your post. Good stuff. <laughs> like, mm. Doing uh, trying to be army army soldier stuff. Yeah. Uh, give me a report. Uh, yeah, it's all good. Great. Because um, I mean, it's it's quick. It's it's uh, mm. I'm wandering around. And then when when they eventually emerge, I act like I wasn't waiting. As you tour the the camp, um, you run into 
one of the other important individuals who's been working around the the area who you've encountered him a few times but only in passing it's um baron eric von molenberg the who you remember meeting as uh um one of uh veo's other adoptive parents um and uh the uh baron von molenberg has actually been serving kind of an administrative role um in the the whole encampment uh since um since kind of being brought into the the officiation and he approaches you uh um Pluto with a with a very bit of a, a grave look on his face he's he's a very slight man um quite quite skinny um and unlike anyone else around the camp he doesn't wear armor or anything like that he's more more clad in the the attire of of a nobleman um and he the 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 sort that would uh, that he would not be above wearing a powdered wig uh and spectacles um and so he he has kind of a, a a jacket of of a light blue uh with sort of that that frilled neck piece and the the frilled shoulders uh the frilled uh frill, frilled sleeves um and he he carries with him um several several books and scrolls and papers and he he says prince jackson if i could have a moment of your time uh, yeah. I, I i um i wanted to just check in on this hunt business um as the lord commander uh, as as the lord commander and the king are currently speaking and uh the and lieutenant commander elias drexel is also a judge in this matter i just wanted to avail you of some of the news and developments that have have occurred regarding this challenge and i've received some we've received some letters and some notices in in the camp Hmm. That uh, might change the scope of uh, of this aff- whole affair. Well, yeah, that's. It. I mean, this is our primary focus. We we are nearly halfway through, and we are unsure of our place in the matter. So, any news is of utmost importance. Thank you for bringing this to me. As as you know. Um, the Lieutenant Commander Elias Drexel and Ophelia Reed are serving as observers and judges for your side of the contest. This is yeah. matched by the other cast, the other um, Illyrian Flamekeeper and Petra Lang. Um, but it was decided that we would need a neutral fifth judge in this contest, and it seems that that judge has been selected. Oh, perfect! Who did they get? Did they get some some high class Illyrian? Did they get? Uh, a proper, uh, a proper uh, Drakenheim native. Who, who, who did they go with? Well, we were asked to seek someone out from Caspia, and a very prestigious Caspian responded to our request. Oh, I'm so, I'm so intrigued. Thankfully, finally, some good luck. The High King Venus Joplin herself. Oh no. She's Yes. Are you sure? Can I see? give me give me the letter. Give me the give me He the... he he passes you the 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 letter that has the seal of House Joplin and the 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 again with the muscled arm and the clutching the the <laughs> the, 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 the 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 blade of of House Joplin. Joplin. As you um, as you look over the the letter, um, uh, Baron von Molenberg continues. As the final judge, the High King has made two requirements upon the final leg of the contest. To maintain the most neutral ground possible, the High King has made arrangements for the judging to occur in Liberio. Liberio? Yes, in Liberio. Seeing as that there are representatives from all the nations, the High King felt it was inappropriate for the the final judgment to occur at, on the soil of any one of Caspia, Illyria, or Westamar, and so she's proposed this. 
But the other component is that the High King has said that her vote will go to the winner of a Gasconade. You know what a Gasconade is. I know what a Gasconade is. Obviously, you don't have to tell me, Baron. A Caspian duel can be optionally decided in the event of a tie, or in other cases, by what is known as a Gasconade, which is a a phase of extravagant bragging and boasting over one's trophy. (laughs) Well, now... (laughs) I mean, if she thinks she can pull a fast one on me and that I can't outbrag a paladin who serves a higher purpose and I serve, well, myself, I mean, she's got another thing coming. But of course she would pull this this stuff last minute. This is classic. She's had it out for me ever since I first started the whole Illyrian thing but now she's really just pulling like come on like she why would she be interested in like the duel why would she be what's her motive look I really appreciate you can I keep this can I keep this A- absolutely yes you can this, this, and I start mumbling what are probably curses mm. <laughs> under, under my breath as I I think about I start to kind of pace uh, in the courtyard. Yeah, of course she's going to pull. There's one other matter that I wanted to bring to the the king's okay. attention. Yep. You you can you can tell me. Hit hit me. Uh, we we have a visitor who has come unannounced. Uh, she wishes to speak with the king and she is definitely one of noble bearing, I, I, but she hasn't quite identified herself and wishes to speak at least under private conditions with the king. This is the laziest assassination attempt I have ever encountered. They're, they're not even trying anymore. No, you know what? You can tell her if she's not going to reveal herself that she can bug off because we we have... We we've we've just we just dealt with kill machines. They didn't even have feelings. They exploded. Um, if teeth were falling out. No, no, no more surprises. That's not even. They're not even. Who? Who's coming? I, again, you you must. My apologies. She she's introduced herself in camp. She has traveled only with a small group of soul of. Rather well equipped, but not conventional soldiers. I think they must be sailors of some kind. It's possible she might hail from one of the more coastal cities, perhaps Dransmond, uh, somewhere around a- Ash Bay, but she did ask for Wilhelm Wolfsbane, and she seemed to know who. Uh, she, she simply mentioned. That to say that uh, she knew uh, Wilhelm from uh, from something that happened in the Elvenmeyer wetlands. This could be a trick. This could be, you know, maybe she gains trust. This guy's been spouting his rules out. Look, Baron, between you and me, like he's given everybody his Achilles heel. Okay, I don't know what. Uh, it, Everyone's going to know where he is. You know how hard it is to be on security detail for this guy? He runs up and he just shakes the assassin's hand. Are you? No, look, I'm not. I don't mean to vent you. Look, I just don't mean to pull you into this. Look, uh, you know what? I'm going to vet her. You know, uh, I think it's important that uh, I meet this individual and I, she, and, and even me, but not even me. It's got to be through Veo. You know, uh, she's the Lord Commander. Uh, she's highest on security clearance. If she gives the okay, she can meet one-on-one with the king. But if she gets a no from Veo, turn her around. Get back on your ship. Get back on your boat. Very well. Would you like me to introduce you to her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, sorry, I'm just a little bit 
the High King, why would you care about it? It's a it's a duel. It's a duel. And and the guest Yeah, yeah, let's go. All right. The the Baron um, leads you to the edge of the camp, where uh, where not far from the gates, um, there is a, sort of a, a an area where guests to the camp who haven't kind of had their security clearance or kind of <laughs> quarantine in a sort sort of way. Um, Bows pointing at them, <laughs> like yeah, not necessarily, not in a, in any sort of violent way, but but basically kept in a place where the the soldiers can keep an eye on, on them. There, there's a group of about half a dozen people, um, and as befitting their, their description, they the 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 soldiers that are with this woman are all um, are all lightly armed and armored with uh, crossbows, pistols, and um, and rapiers, and the the lot of them do have the look of sailors about them. Perhaps if you didn't know any better, pirates, and. The the woman that is with them um, certainly has a bit of a dusted up, the appearance of a bit of a dusted up noble. Um, and she is a, um, she's a black woman that looks like she must be in her early 20s, no older than that, um, with tightly curled black hair. Um, and she is dressed in a white button up, uh, with a brown leather vest and dark trousers and swashbuckling boots, carrying a shimmering rapier with a golden hilt. Um, and looking closely, you can see there is some sort of engraving or family crest that is on the hilt and perhaps in the in, in the the rest of her getup. But you don't know enough about West Amarian nobility to really tell what house she might be be coming from. Um. And she she looks up and says, as you approach, you're the Caspian Prince, aren't you? You know my name. Most do. Pluto Jackson, correct? That's the net. That's you, yeah, you did. That's the first time that's worked. A pleasure to meet you. It's good to meet a peer, at least. I am Lady Verona von Baden. I am uh, here to see Wilhelm Wolfsbane. Turns out that's not his real name at all. We know each other. We he saved my he was him and his allies saved my life some time ago. And I'm here to repay the favor. Yeah, I understand you want to meet with him privately. Yes. I do. It's a sensitive matter. Uh, I think that can be arranged. I apologize for some of the theatrics. We're a little on high alert. Uh, there has been assassination attempts against uh, who you know as Wilhelm Wolfsbane, Spain, and we are keeping a closer watch. However, mm. then I um, guess if- my warnings are a little bit too late. I apologize. Oh, what? What do you know? I'm happy to share what I know, but I'd like to share it in private with the king present. So you have information about the assassination attempts on Wilhelm? It's not hard evidence, but it might offer... And I was hoping to warn him but if it's already started, then hopefully it's not too late to turn this around. Well, this could be helpful, but there is one requirement. You need to be vetted. Um, there's the Lord Commander. You will meet with her first. She will inspect your character. And if you, uh, if you are who you say you are, I have no doubt you will be able to meet with the king. Very well then. Vail! Vail! What? Vail, come over here! I'm busy! No, I say, 
If you're eating, just bring it with you! I come out of the tent. <laughs> eating the food that they brought snacks. Pluto! Clearly, I was having an important meal, conversation meal. Look, it's, um, I'm gonna come over to, <laughs> I'll meet you, I'll meet you halfway. There's someone here to see Wilhelm. She says she's an old friend. Wilhelm saved her. Mm-hmm. He's got this. He saves a lot of people, so that's believable. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lady Avalon? Verona Von Baden. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Whoa, my notes are way off. Uh, Von Baden. <laughs> Von Baden. Do you know a Von Baden? Do you know a... I mean, I've heard of a lot of Von somethings uh, in my time in the castle. Okay. Look, I, I said I have a foolproof way of making sure she's who she says she is. You you I said you give her the once over, but she wants to meet with Wilhelm in private. She has she says she has information about the assassination attempts. I mean that's very important. Um yeah. as long as she's alone, I don't see if it's a problem as long as she says who she says she is. Mm-hmm. Like I could do Ignatius, like behind her. And you could ask her questions, and we could see if she's here to murder I don't think him. Ignatius will be necessary. I think I he think resents it. that. He's told me. <laughs> <laughs> He's yelling it. He's, He's yelling only at for the you. highest, highest noble things because he's such a noble sword. Good, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Keep it. Yeah, keep that up. Okay. Such so so. <laughs> Such righteous blade so I, does not yeah, need I, these I, trivial matters. <laughs> there it is. So I don't know how you want to approach this then. Um, I was just trying to buy some time, but yeah, she she's here. I think I think it's worth at least hearing her out. But um, ever since what happened on the way back, I think we just need to be a little more careful. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, if, if you want to go check with Wilhelm, see if he's up for visitors. I can. Okay. Uh, I got a question I can ask her. Okay. okay. Um, Wilhelm. <laughs> as you as you go up to get Wilhelm, um, uh, Eric um, comes up to you, Veo, gives you a big hug, uh, and says, "I'll introduce you to this von Baden. Mm. If she is von Baden, if she is who she says she is, Veo. Then she would be the daughter of Valentin von Baden, the Duke of Dransmond." The Von Badens are one of the most powerful families in Westamar right now. Mm. So if she is who she says she is, we it would be a mistake to turn her away. Agreed. I think if she's of noble birth or blood, and she's of a duke's daughter, then we'll know right away if uh, if she's not who she says she is. All right. Eric introduces you and presents. He he says, "I presume, Lady Val- Lady Verona von Baden, Lord Commander Veosenya. She will determine whether you can have an audience with the king." Lady von Baden, nice to meet you. I heard you know our king. Yes, I do. He saved my life. Not far from a... In the Elvenwire wetlands, I was bringing a shipment of delirium to sell in Liberio from Dransmond on land. Not normal for me, but my ship, the Rose of Thorns, was in repair, and I needed the money. So I ran afoul and was attacked as I was traveling down the roads by these village folk that had become possessed. Me and my companions were rotting in a cell in the Alvenmeyer wetlands, and Wilhelm and his companions saved me. His companions being? Uh, Rudy Whitaker and Wrath. Okay. Interesting. Well, I mean, looking at you, looking at your sword, I can 
tell that you're of noble blood. Yes, my father is Valentin von Baden, and I am here at his discretion, although at my insistence. I have one question for you. Certainly. What is the fanciest thing you've ever eaten being a duke's daughter? Oh my. Well. The fan, like, put it on top. I must say, there was one. There was once a peculiar vessel that docked in Dransmond. It had come from the far continent, bearing some of the strangest meats and the most bizarre spices that you had ever seen. They had eggs of a bird that is taller than a horse. No. And they beat the eggs into an omelet with these very fine spices and served it with such su- with such a supple fat and a beautiful wine. It was really quite lovely. Mm, yeah, she's who she says she is. Yeah, you can for sure 100% go in. Only anyone who would tell me that story is of noble bloodline, so you're good to go. I've traveled quite a bit, and I must say, when you travel by boat and you go from port to port, seeing to the business of our family, I have been privy to many a fine meal. If you have an appreciation for food, my friend, you must have... Have you grown up around Drakenheim? Oh, I've been here my whole life. And let me tell you the very interesting meals that I've had. You know, I have have a list. If you have an appreciation for food, believe you me, the places that I've been, oh, wonderful things. I hope that we can be friends, Lord Commander. Perhaps you would benefit from a more worldly palate. Well, when all's said and done, maybe if we survive all this, then I'd take you up on that offer. Come, let me introduce you to the, well, reintroduce you to the king. Very well. Thank you. But leave your soldiers, leave your people here. Just you. Certainly. Certainly. So the group of you assemble in Wilhelm's tent, the guards posted outside. Um, and Wilhelm, you are introduced to, once again, to a familiar face, Verona von Baden. Miss von Baden, uh, pleasure. Thank you for coming all this way. Well, Wilhelm, it's timely that you did not uh, accept my invitation to come visit my father at Castle Baden. But no, and especially, I'm especially insulted now, knowing who you really are. Um, but your Majesty, you have my regards. My apologies, Miss Von Baden. Uh, it was not my intention to pass up such a wonderful invitation, but you must understand that arriving in Dransmond, which we did, we had every intention of visiting the castle, but upon mm. arriving, we got caught up in a bit of a murder mystery, so to speak, that led us down the road to Ash Bay. And since that moment, things have been utterly out of hand, and I haven't really had the time to revisit uh, those invitations. I I also must apologize for the secrecy of my name. You must understand that carrying the name of Von Kessel around was not something I was quite ready to expose until it was absolutely necessary. It's just as well... (sighs) My father did not take sides in the war between your father and your aunt, and so didn't meet you, but he might have recognized you. If there's anyone that could have figured out who you were, it might have been him. I I was concerned of that. And I will say, with respect... Your Majesty, you are making a mess of this country.
And, well, you have been paying attention to what's been going on with the Illyrians. And that situation. I'm here to warn you because you saved my life. But. The other dukes are plotting against you. For what you've done. What have I done? You haven't talked to a single one of them. And that's all it takes. If you mean to rule this kingdom, if you mean to rule Westamar, you need to actually be meeting with the people who are going to be paying your taxes and providing your armies. Think things have been happening very quickly, and my name getting out the way it has was much more intense than I imagined. And first and foremost of my concerns was an army marching into our lands, heading towards our capital. Yes, and if you had have met with the dukes, they would have met, made an army to meet it. And instead, you're groveling at the feet of the Illyrians and bringing shame to the nobility. You would have rather we went to war. Half of the dukes would have. And then we would have lost half of Westamar, and we're already a crumbling nation. I'm not telling you what you should have done. I'm telling you how the people are responding to it. I don't necessarily agree, Wilhelm. I think that you are making the right choice in making peace with the Illyrians and not going to war with them. But not all the other dukes think the same way. And there has been talk amongst them already. Letters have been exchanged. Words have been said. And there is a coup growing right beneath your feet. And I've already heard that someone tried to kill you. And I'm not surprised in the least. Well then, Miss Von Baden, as um, seeing as you owe me a small kindness for the acts of saving your life, what would you suggest my best course of action is? You are you. You've made a lot of promises and obligations, from what I understand. But the biggest thing that I've learned is that if you want to make your way in the, the politics here of Westamar, you need to listen more to the other dukes and listen to their concerns. If you're going to be making... Word has already been getting out about this agreement that you're making with the Illyrians, that there's word that you are going to accept the bribe of the divine matriarch and bankrupt our nation and make us into basically the debtors to Illyria. Is this true? No. That's the offer they put forward, and I am in the midst of trying to gain leverage in that conversation so that I can make counter offers that will benefit mm. our nation better. I see the holes in the Illyrian's offer. I'm not blind. It wasn't my place to make bold statements without having leverage and seeing as we are in a situation right now where I am the representative of a nation that has lost its capital, that has been at civil war for years. I need to be very careful with how I make my counter offers and the acts that I'm currently taking. This uh, Caspian duel that I am part of is that I as a possible heir to the throne, along with an alliance with Caspia, can forge an alliance with Illyria that benefits us, uniting the three nations for the first time in a long time to save Westamar. And I will not be indebted to Illyria. I have no plans to accept their offer. I have plans to make peace. With, that is all. With respect... Your Majesty, you have plans to unite the nations 
and you haven't even united your own nation. You have plans to make peace amongst the nations, and you don't even have peace within your own nation. Respectfully, I understand. Respectfully, Westamar needs to get its house in order. And if you're going to be making deals with the Illyrians, you you have more bargaining chips than perhaps you realize, and more that you can demand of them than perhaps you realize. And I also want to say to you, on a personal level, I think that you are making a grave mistake in destroying the delirium in Drakenheim. The past 10 years, House von Baden has been making a fortune off of taxing the trade of delirium out of our ports. Hmm. It has enriched our house, allowed us to expand double the size of our fleet, and secure our waters. That's very good, Miss von Baden. Um, have you happened to take any trips recently down to Ash Bay? Yes, I have. Let me tell you what I've seen. When I arrived in Dransmond with all intentions of meeting you and your father, instead I got wrapped up with a league of fish people living in your sewers who were at war with rat people living in your sewers. The rat people were constructing a submarine. The fish people were stealing and kidnapping people from your city and turning them into more fish people. I followed that trail down to Ash Bay where an entire town had gone missing and a giant sea monster which was created by delirium was wreaking havoc and destroying things and trying to create an army which me and my comrades put an end to all of your trading of delirium and the profit that your house has had is at the expense of people's lives at the expense of creating monstrosities that were burrowing into the core of your city, that were there beneath your very feet, that I had to help clean up. So when you're asking me whether I think destroying delirium is a good idea or not, I have seen the terror and villainy that it has caused, that those that are profiting off of it sometimes seem to be blind to, and I mean no offense by that. If I was making heaps of money, I might not be looking in the sewers either, but when people are going missing in my own city, if you look into it, most of the problems and nightmarish stories that you have been hearing around Westamar, you yourself were kidnapped by brainwashed villagers taken to a tower full of lizard people where a monster that had slipped through from another dimension was planning to devour your brain. Also all caused by delirium. This is all true, your majesty. This is all true. But we can't squander it and we can't just let it's a gold mine in the middle of our nation a gold mine has no value if everybody in the continent has turned into a monster the gold mine has no value if that same gold mine is going to root itself into our planet and but destroy it surely there's something else that can be done surely if you if you have seen all the dangers of it, you've fought against it, you've found solutions, surely there must be some way that we can benefit from this in some way. I don't know. I, I've seen the dangers firsthand. I've seen these things too around Ash Bay. But I also see the appetite and I see the opportunity. And it might be worthwhile considering some other middle ground or some other option, especially one that doesn't ha make than our nation a thrall to a foreign power and also one that doesn't ruin the relationship that our nation has had with the amethyst academy for years the amethyst academy is a great ally and i don't plan to lose them what i do plan to do 
is make sure that they are held accountable because in the absence of nobility, they seem to have lost their accountability and are being extremely reckless with delirium. And the nobility think that you are being reckless with our nation's future and short and have also not done had your accountability. You position yourself as king and hopefully you can make the right decisions about this. I'm not telling you what you should and shouldn't do. I'm just telling you that there are people in Westamar who are powerful, who you need as allies, and who might not be happy with some of the decisions that you've made. And if you have all of these grand plans to unite the nations and to make peace, then you might want to see to some of the own some of the affairs that are happening. Yes, you are looking at the problems of Drakenheim, but the but Westamar is more than just Drakenheim. It always has been. And ultimately, and and really, you saved me. And I just wanted to warn you, because there are others that have seen the things and experienced the things that you know of, and all they see is the money, and all they see is the opportunity. You, you better watch out for Duke Von Fritz, because he's going to take the first opportunity he can to get rid of you. Oh, I'm aware of Duke Von Fritz, and I want to thank you, Miss Von Baden, for coming this way to warn me, and rule number 97 is never argue with the wisdom of those who know more than you, and I respect your opinions, and I cherish this conversation. I'm going to continue to do what I believe is right, and I see value in what you've said. And you're right, I, I should be talking to the Dukes of Westamar. Unfortunately, this has been a whirlwind for me of trying to figure out what it means to be in the position I'm in. It's not something I ever asked for. It's something I find myself in now. And seeing the horrors that I've seen, I'm just trying to make it better for all of us. And Miss Von Baden, I hope that I can convince you and your father to see things the way that I do, because maybe there is a middle ground, but while we trade delirium off our shores, while we trade it with uh, the distant far continent, you say that Westamar is more than just Drakenheim. This continent is more than just Westamar. And this world is more than just our continent. And delirium threatens all of it. What I'm trying to do is convince people of the terror that this is causing, the people that we are losing to it, and the fact that we may very well lose everything to it. Perhaps. And for Perhaps. But there's no reason why we should come out of this crisis licking the boots of Illyria. Don't we deserve... The people of Westamar have suffered greatly. We have borne the sacrifices of this disaster. Don't we deserve to come out ahead? We deserve to come out of this. Who's ahead of who? is of less a concern to me than us all making it out. And I want you to know that I will not be licking the boots of Illyria. I want to be very careful with the agreements I make with them, and you underestimate mm. my goals and ideals as I step into a political debate with Illyria. They have put forward a very heavy-handed deal that is definitely in favor of them. All that I want is for them not to come marching into our territory and wage war on us. All I want is for their assistance in the hardships that are to come. I'm going to see to it that we get that, but we will not be taking their money. 
and we will not be indebted to Illyria. We have allies in Caspia. If Pluto Jackson can raise his position in Caspia, then we have a great ally indeed, and I hope to help him achieve that. And in turn, even if Illyria wants to be indebted with us, I'm sure that between Illyria, Caspia, and Westamar itself, we can pick ourselves up from this devastation. I just worry that you are making too many alliances with the Caspians and the Illyrians without looking to the own affairs in our own borders. I hear you, and I will look into those affairs. I will, if need be, once I'm done with this hunt, would you have me go on a political tour, travel to the various cities? I could meet with uh, Duke von Fritz. I could meet, meet with your father. I could go to Altbrook. I could go to Geldstead. With respect, that's probably the least that you should do. Then I will do that and whatever else is deemed necessary of me. Again, you're the only person in front of me right now that I can apologize to, but things have been intense. Alternatively, my... you can command them to come to you. You can order the other nobles of Westamar, the high duke, the high nobles, the dukes and duchesses, to renew their oaths of fealty to you. And you'll have that opportunity to meet with all of them one by one, if that's what you want to do. You could do that, demand their presence, demand that they all come before you, and affirm their loyalty, affirm that you are the king of this nation. But if you do, if you continue to ignore the nobles of Westamar, they will not have you as king. It doesn't matter what heroic deeds you have done. It doesn't matter what decisions you're going to make. Wilhelm, you can think that you're making the right decision. But if the people that you rule over don't think that you're making the right decision, they're just going to think of you as a tyrant, not as a ruler. Everything I've done is for the people of this nation. I, uh, I'm trying to protect them. I'm Certainly. And <sighs> look. <sighs> Plenty of tyrants have said those things in the past before. So don't think that those words are that, that saying that you're doing it for the good of the people is going to protect you at all. Those are hollow words. So if that's your only explanation, I think you should consider your what you're what you're going to say to the nobility. Because people like Ludwig von Fritz are powerful, and he doesn't give a damn for his people. Thank you, Miss Von Baden. I have a lot to think about. Very well. If you need any other advice, if there's anything that I can offer you or, or help, I want you to know that even though my father did not take sides in the Civil War, you have done right by us so far. Dransmond is willing to stand by House Von Kessel. But you are going to need to listen to some of the things that we want. Understood. Thank you. I Thank think that's you. where we'll take our break. <laughs> <laughs> And we are back from our short rest. We have consumed, restocked on our consumables, and we're ready to have some more political conversations. Maybe not play too much D&D, &D, but, <laughs> but more politics. So as, as Lady Verona von Baden begins to take her leave, she says, Look at Wilhelm. Can I call you Willie? Bill? Is, is, does, does anyone call you that? 
I prefer Wilhelm. Uh, you don't have to call me your majesty or king or anything, but I do prefer Wilhelm. Okay. Wilhelm. I know that you have a lot of decisions to make, and I don't think that you're wrong. That the I, It's not good in Ash Bay right now. We've still got problems to deal with with all of these monsters and the haze, and things are really strange. I mean, look at... I just heard word that there was this academy vessel that ran aground, and I went out to investigate it, and by the time I got out there, the ship was gone. So, there, there's a... What ship? There was... Uh, I got word on, on some of my fleets that there was an academy ship. Uh, I think Near called, Ash Bay? Yes, it was along the Crystal Coast. It ran aground, and I went to investigate, but by the time that I, my ship got there, it I couldn't find it anywhere along the, the coast. A lot of things have been going... It's not uncommon. Ships have gone missing. There was a brief period after you left Dransman where it looked like it was getting a little bit better, but the delirium is coming down the Dran River, and that is something that we're going to have to stop. But we have made so much money selling this delirium. It is... What, what it has allowed us to do is expand and maybe there is some kind of middle ground that you can reach where you don't have to destroy all of it but at least you can do enough to keep us safe because it is power i, I mean ludwig von fritz has outfitted an entire platoon of his soldiers with delirium edged blades i don't even want to mess with it, it it's it's unreal and, so, and you can't forget, either, Wilhelm, so many of the nobles in Westamar, their own children are mageborn. And while they can't inherit under the Edicts of Lumen, they have their their own family members or court mages that are serving serving them. Duchess Ursula von Sindau, her son is an Amethyst Academy mage. She's her own court mage. So just be careful of the... Of, of, by making these sweeping decisions right now, there's a lot of people that are going to be, a lot of the nobility and a lot of people are going to be affected by this. So you just should think about this. And look at, I say to myself, yes, money can't buy you happiness, but the more of it you have, well, the less you need to worry. And that's all well and good for you, and I, again, think you have many incredible points. But as long but, as you have good allies and a good cash flow, well, then you have the recipe for a happy reign. All I'm saying is, you could march into Ash Bay and try to tell the people that live there that uh, the profit made by delirium is great for a happy life, but sadly, there is nobody left in Ash Bay. And how many more towns are we willing to sacrifice for the happiness of the nobles? If without without the nobility, who's going to be in charge? Obviously, we have to make some decisions. I agree. But there are plenty of people who have very good reasons to want to continue at least letting us have the money. The, the money that we've made, if we couldn't sell the Delirium, Dransman would have fallen. We wouldn't have been able to keep our own people safe. There would have been, we wouldn't have had, look at Ludwig von Fritz. If we did, weren't able to expand our own navy, protect our own people, have pay our soldiers, Ludwig von Fr Fritz probably would have tried to take over Dransmund. He's wanted to take over Dransmund for a very long time. So, it's not that simple. 
I realize it's not that simple, and I just hope you realize that I have my rules for a reason, and I'm going to leave you with this one. Rule number 71 is the price for peace is paid in blood, but never forget who has to pay the bill. If that bill is being paid by the people of Westmar, the civilians, how many, what's the cost? Where does it end? We've lost Schaffberg, nearly. We almost lost Tierhaven. We've lost Ash Bay. You haven't lost Ash Bay. Dransmond is Ash Bay. And yes, well, while there are lots of villages that have Ash been, Shaffin, affected, sorry. been affected, yeah, the, the, the whole bay is still holding. And part of the reason why it's able to hold is because I have a good fleet. Well, sorry, Ashafen is lost. Several yeah. towns, villagers have gone missing. Along the Dran River, I've heard reports that farmsteads are just abandoned all along the river. Families died, poisoned by contamination. The area surrounding the Dran River for miles around Drakenheim, and now seeping in to the small, quaint villages that make up this nation. Wilhelm, we are losing them. You're not going to win any arguments, win or lose any arguments with me about telling me how bad it is. I know how bad it is. But at the end of the day, if you're telling... It, it, there, there's other people in Westmar that you're going to have to convince. Hmm. I, I hear you. I'm sorry. I'm just... And you're not going to convince Ludwig von Fritz with that argument. Sorry to say. He I don't care. know if there's many arguments I have that could convince Ludwig von Fritz of anything. He was against my father. He's hated my family since we started ruling. It's mm -hmm. going to be... There's only one thing Ludwig, is, Ludwig von Fritz is ever going to respect. And that's a strong arm in the point of a blade or a good amount of gold. That's just the way he is. And if I may have a few strong arms. These guys. No. <laughs> but But if you want to accomplish anything with your reign, you are going to need money. If you want to do all of these things, it, it, because Wilhelm, at the end of the day, if you actually want to get rid of delirium, you want to clean up, you want to rebuild, that's going to take money. That's going to take coin. And you should start thinking about where that's going to be coming from. Very well. Anyways... If you have any other questions, or if there's anything else that I can advise you on, I'm at your service. I want you to know that Dransman, that despite what I, these concerns that I have, my father, the Duke, and Dransman are willing to stand with House Von Kessel. Thank you, Verona. And I, I'm going to actually, I'm going to bow to her. The old, you know... We just want want you to consider carefully some of these decisions that you've been making. And if you plan on destroying Delirium, you might want not you you might just want to consider a gentler way of going about of breaking that news to the to the other nobles. It's going to immediately affect our bottom line if you do that. Just to say. Thank you. She bows and takes her leave. Veil, Pluto, what do you think? So I guess we would enter in shortly after and then be sort of brought up to speed on. I thought you were present for this conversation. So if that wasn't <laughs> the case, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, I, oh, I, I mean, thought she I thought she private. kicked us out yeah. and wanted us private. But no, I'm, uh, I'm okay if we like 
Could, okay. could Veo have just Eve's listened dropped. by the... I was going to yeah. say, I, I walked yeah. in and I was like, I was eavesdropping. Yeah, no, yeah I, we were I, totally I, right outside. Sorry, I'm so sorry. I, I was like, why are these two being so quiet? I thought they could jump in. Uh, but yeah, no. Um, okay. So yeah, if you uh, if you want to say your piece or anything, or if you want to actually talk to uh, Verona, you actually can if you want to. I mean... Um... I don't know where I feel like I, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I didn't say her. No, I mean, I, I mean, everything I think I have to say is directly to Wilhelm. I'm sure we'll cross paths again, but. Okay. Uh, I just say uh, the next time we meet, if we're getting all these lords and ladies <laughs> together, please bring something from those fantastic ships that you were talking about. I have a bucket list of things. Um, anything that I can cross off would be just mwah. so new bestie. I see. As as Pluto and Veo walk back into the tent, I look up and I go, "Guys, being a king is hard. My father's rules didn't prepare me for this. I feel like I've been just go 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 since the moment my name got out, and I've been trying to clean up." messes the same way that I was hired to do by the Amethyst Academy originally. The Dusk Wardens are here to clean up messes caused by delirium, and that's what I kept trying to do, and I I didn't realize uh, my duty has always been to the people of this nation, and I, I'm I don't think I was prepared to learn that I am doing wrong by them. Listen, Wilhelm, if I've learned anything about making decisions on behalf of Drakenheim, is that someone is always going to be upset with the decision that you make. But you know what? Toast can never become bread again. So all you can do is, is move forward with what you have. With the toast? With the toast, because it can't it can't go back. Can't go so back. you gotta go. Can't go back to being before toast. Ah, there's no you before just gotta toast. take the toast and run. Okay, so Bayo has stolen many toast from myself and yeah. others. She just runs away, and she's so fast. You just Your analogies, uh, they're good, Bayo. <laughs> <laughs> Try to be wise, you know, past my wisdom that I've learned. But, anyways. Someone's always going to be mad. We just got to move forward. And it is what it is. But I agree. Your rules don't have an answer for everything. What you are going to do is have to make decisions with, well, us. Yeah. You know, and the consequences will show themselves. But as long as you're doing what you believe is right, that's the only thing you can do. I got to be honest, though. I did forget about the Dukes. I yeah. totally forgot that that was something that we should There's have been a lot with. happening here, yeah. right? Yeah, and and hey, a look, lot. you're look, we can't show that that you're a little overwhelmed. You're over Wilhelmed, but <laughs> but I think we need to address the fact that we have moved forward without bringing everybody with us. Hmm. And you know, this friend of yours, she obviously cares about you. And I mean, saving your life seems like a great trade off because she's right. We, if we don't, if we don't find a way to get these Lords on our side there, you know, there, if there's really a, a, a coup being talked about, like, it doesn't matter what deal you make with the Illyrians. You're just going to be some like rogue King. You know, um, I know there's a lot of magic that happens in the city and we can appoint things and stuff. But if no one recognizes you, then it's like, mm. what's it for? Yeah. And we definitely don't have the money to pay them to like you. Yeah, we we're a little uh, cash light. I think they, I think you have all my money or I have a couple bucks, but we're going to need strength in numbers. We're going to need the allies we do have. We're going to need to solidify those alliances and use those as leverage when discussing matters with the Dukes of Westamar. Mm -hmm. 
Hmm. Coming to the table with established alliances with House Jackson, with the Illyrians, with um, the Hooded Lanterns, and we have the Steel Fangs on our side as well. They're a very powerful mercenary group. Kind of a rough reputation, but that could go a long way in terms of strength. Perhaps we should take count of what we do have and use that as a statement to bring to the table. And remember, we're doing this duel to figure out really the fate of Sebastian. That doesn't mean we have to make any decisions about the Illyrian's deals right away. Maybe we figure out where we're at with the Duke's before we come to the table and it's just one more bargaining chip if you have the nation on your side. Perhaps it is essential to tell the Illyrians that our alliance is good, but their deal is something that I need to discuss with the rulers of my nation. Mm. The, the, the obvious, I think, too, is, is getting any of these dukes that are on board. Um, you have a clear ally in in Verona. What did I? <laughs> the von Badens. Von Badens. Um, the um, who else? Who else can we of the Dukes? Do you are you on good terms with? Because we if we start with them, they're going to be the ones that are going to praise your name. Where did we meet the- for the Illyrian meeting? Well, you you met near Geldstadt with Ursula mm-hmm. von Sindau. The, the Duchess of, of, of Geldstadt. That's a good one. Could probably talk to her. I will tell you right now, we are not on good terms with the Klein Castles. Um, they live in Kesselholm and I murdered <laughs> the Countess. They don't even... They don't even... Do you have to appoint a new Duke there? I don't know. Nobody... I again I'm just kind of relying on Elias to tell me what to do and uh, it's if if it's helpful to summarize there are formally speaking the the ranks of the nobility in Westamar um, go like like this there's the monarch and then there are the provincial dukes okay and so the major city each of the major cities of Westamar has a duke and so this it, this includes um Helig and helberg we bring as, up the map yeah absolutely actually that's that's great because that will probably help in just determining uh exactly who is who um and and in fact our um yeah okay there we go okay great that's still working. Um, okay. So to r- review, okay. Um, in um, in Westamar, you're basically looking at um, the high nobles and then the rest of the nobility itself. So you just met with Verona von Baden, who is the daughter of Valentin von Baden, who is the Duke of Dransmond. Right. Um, Then from there, um, you have um, Duke Malkador Engelhart, and he is the Duke of Altbrook over here. Okay. Um, And then Helberg is ruled um, by Agnes von Helberg, um, fittingly, the von Helbergs. Uh, and then there's Sophia von Sneestrom of um, Helig, which is actually off this map here. It's a little bit, f- it's north of Tonsberg. And then there is Ursula von Sindau of uh, Geldstadt. And then there's Ludwig von Fritz of Todsfeld. So those are the six major dukes. What about Luc- Luchten? Leuchten, okay. Leuchten and Kesselholm are special, okay? Traditionally speaking, Kesselholm is ruled directly by House von Kessel, and it was mm-hmm. o- and and 
it is still kept as the private estate of the von kessels right um and leuchten tradition leuchten is a fortress city okay um it is considered to be one of the most strategically important locations in westamar and currently leuchten is ruled by a baron not a duke because the the Leuchten, as a fortress city, it is generally given an appointed command. Usually, um, so the last ruler of Leuchten was actually your aunt. Mm -hmm. um, because traditionally what happens is a monarch gives one of their siblings <laughs> custodianship over Leuchten. And if you have more than one sibling, basically one sibling gets Kesselholm, one sibling gets Leuchten, well, the monarch rules from Drakenheim, right? right? So so essentially, if you have a relative, a close relative who you want to keep in line, but away from the capital, <laughs> you send them to Leuchten. Um, and if you have, or to Kesselholm, essentially. Cool. Right? So, who is Altbrook again? Uh, Alpbrook is Malkador Engelhart. Engelhart. We're, we're 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 probably not on great terms with Toddsfeld. Um and I believe Helberg, we went to we had to avoid Helberg, didn't we? We went to Alpbrook because or was it the opposite? We were not welcome in one of those places. I um you you went when you were going for the negotiations, you went to Geldstadt and because Leuchten is currently controlled by Baron Boris the Bold, who was the who was the direct military lieutenant of Cecilia von Kessel, um who who was again Wilhelm's aunt who fought against Wilhelm's uh um uh father. father. So Leuchten Leuchten isn't ruled by a duke, but the ruler, but Boris the Bold has already allied himself with the Illyrians and allowed the Illyrians to pass into Westmar. Normally, an invading army would not be would have to fight their way through Leuchten because of its strategic position, but uh, Baron Boris the Bold basically acquiesced to the Illyrians um, because probably he hates you. Um. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Good. Good. Oh, this is charming, isn't it? Um, well, and there are many other barons. Um, so mm -hmm, there's mm -hmm. both barons and counts. So most of the larger cities and air and counties, uh, like if you think about it like this, Westmar um, is divided up into several large provinces, basically geographically kind of based around each of the major cities. Um, and then each of those provinces have their own counties, and then each of the counties have their own baronies. So there, it kind of goes the monarch, dukes and duchesses, counts and countesses, followed by the, the barons, and then there's the smaller landed nobles, and then petty nobles, who are people that have minor titles but no actual land. And if you're a noble and you don't have land, are you really a noble? No. <laughs> so, uh, Pluto... You uh, wanted to go hunt minotaurs right now? Okay. <laughs> Maybe. The Look, I know a lot has been put on your plate. And you're going to feel a sense of urgency. Um, however, uh, as king, uh, I believe uh, delegation and time management are going to be focuses and we will help you with that um, because we want what's best for Draconine. Um I believe uh, our focus should continue on the hunt. And by the way, I was given some news. Here's a letter that uh, Veo, your dad gave me. Huh? Um, the high king from Caspia is going to be the neutral judge. So she's obviously trying to pull something. Um, be not so neutral? Is that what's happening yeah, here? Yeah, I think, I, I think that's not good because... Because she wants House Jackson to lose the king's moot. Yeah. And, and so there's... Yeah, there's... there's. But the losing 
winning this duel wouldn't win you the king's moot. No, whether or not you c- like whether or not we win the duel, uh, House Jackson still has claim to the killing of biggest Linda. It's not about the king's moot because you know she she just I feel like she's up to something and. I thought she uh, said she wasn't going to interfere with anything to do with Drakenheim. Yeah, this is her way in. So we have to be strategic. One um, of the challenges for the next King's Moot is actually uh, the house with the strongest foreign alliance. So that might be what she's trying to disrupt. Oh, my dad right. would know more about that. Because if uh, I become king and I'm allied with House Jackson, that is a that that's going to be the strongest foreign alliance. But if you, if the Joplin have the security of Drakenheim, like maybe she uses it as leverage. Yeah, she'll allow us to win the duel. House Joplin is a very powerful house to have as allies. But not as powerful as... Look, you're missing the point. Like, I just need you to focus on... The They've hunt. had the strongest military for three decades. Hey, it, that's, that's... That's... It's arguable. Like, it's it's really washy. They like, did walk you, out on us. Yeah, and they did skip leg day a lot. So, like, you know, <laughs> yeah, you're talking to... Look at these calves, okay? Look you at these can't... calves. I see your calves. Your neck. Yes. Bigger than your head. Okay. Yep. Look at these things. Makes wow. it a good foundation for a good yeah, and foreign relationship. <laughs> okay. Your calves uh, make a valid point <laughs> for House Jackson. <laughs> That's what I needed to hear. I think, I think there is um, an opportunity to squash some beef. And make up some of these, uh, these, these, I don't know, missteps uh, with the other dukes. Uh, but it may be best to focus on it uh, on day six because uh, we still need to secure our leverage for the deal with Illyria. Mm-hmm. Save Sebastian Crow. And prove ourselves worthy in the eyes of Illyria. Hmm. Once we've done that, then we can discuss the matter with the other dukes of Westmar. Well, like, yeah, like over these next two days, like we can figure out our plan. But then before we go off and start meeting these people, I think, yeah, we Hmm. finish the, we finish the fight and then we decide who we should, or I mean, my king, I, I don't mean to step over things, but yeah, who do you think you would want to try to re- rein in first? I mean, Transmond and the Von Badens are the most powerful family in Westmar. Having them say that they're on my side is already really valuable. I'm wondering if there's value. We are to meet House Joplin... Uh, Venus herself as a judge she's called for the arrangements to be in um, why am I drawing a blank here uh, Liberio um, <coughs> is it worth bringing all parties to neutral grounds or does that seem ill-advised to bring the Dukes of Westamar to Liberio and ask them to meet us there where we can discuss with Illyria and Caspia present on the matters at hand so that we can just all have an open discussion. That leaves no one in Westamar. Probably not likely that they would all go to a, a foreign place, like th- that they would all mm. leave the nation. Um, yeah. Um, you okay. probably you probably want to ask if you're if you're wondering about who to ask about this. You probably want to talk to either Elias or to Eric about the logistics of actually calling them together. Elias, Eric, <laughs> some I, your king summons you. I understand that there's been uh, uh, Elias Drexel and and uh, 
Eric von Mullenberg enter, and uh, um, Eric says, I understand that there's been some uh, some revelations with our guest. Apparently I've um, been too busy focusing on the tasks at hand currently that it did not come to my attention that I needed to meet with the Dukes of Westmar. Again, I'm quite new at this kingly business, mm. and I just thought that I was doing right by the people. It seems that I have made enemies uh, along the way. Very neglectful of his duties. Um, <sighs> not purposely. Not purposely. Elias sighs, and there's a, a visible look of consternation. The nobles have been a thorn in my side. Now, all of a sudden, they wouldn't come together to help us reclaim Drakenheim. But as soon as there's actually a prize, that's when they all start coming out of the woodwork looking for their peace. All of them are going to be making demands of you. It's no surprise. They're going to be asking things left, right, and center of you. And... They're going to want affordances made to them. They're going to want concessions. They're going to want your favor. They're going to want all sorts of thing, things of you. And we haven't even truly secured your power yet. Personally, personally, I think that the best thing would be to blow them off and show them the, the, the edge of our swords. If they don't want to fall in line, then... We'll destroy them. We'll crush them. Elias. It's wrong. Yeah. R rule number 69. What you give, you two shall receive. And I think it's important that we approach this with the idea that we don't want to destroy people. We're trying to avoid war. We need to give in order to receive. We are giving them a new king. They should be pleased with that. I have been giving so much. Look at all the, the soldiers of the Hood or Lanterns who have fought and bled and died to try to rebuild. Haven't we given them enough? And now they come looking for handouts and concessions? It's disgusting, frankly. Elias, rule number... 98, no matter the situation, never lose your cool. And rule number 99, whenever given a difficult choice, the option that helps the most people is the correct choice. We do not need another civil war. We have had enough war, and if we are not careful in the decisions we are about to make, we could end up with another 10 years of civil war over who is going to rule Drakenheim. And I'm sure you've seen enough of that. You're right. I admit this is beyond my expertise. I am not a politician. I'm a soldier. And in war, all I can see is who are our allies and who are our enemies. That's the way I look at things. And as far as I'm concerned, if they're not willing to fight alongside us, then they're either useless bystanders or enemies. There are ways that we can persuade them. We don't have to use force, but we can show the forces that we have. If we ally with the Von Badens first, if we show the strength that we have by having allies in Illyria, Caspia, the Hooded Lanterns, the Steel Fangs, and... I might have a few other people I'm going to talk to about calling in some favors. Perhaps that's enough to persuade some of the people who might be less interested to join us, knowing the strength that we have. I don't want to go marching onto their doorstep with an army, but I would show them potentially the power that could be had in Westamar if they join us. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds great. You could you could really start to rein in some of those that don't see your your claim as 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 real. 
Mm-hmm. You want to feed them the carrot? Where do you know? Not the stick. Okay. Carrots first, and we'll see who we rein in. Duke von Fritz will not answer to me if I go approach him to have a conversation. But if we talk to the von Badens first, get Verona and her fleet, get Pluto's father and maybe a few Caspian knights, Veosenia, you, Elias, several hooded lanterns, uh, Rickard Steelfang and his mercenaries, Rudy, Wrath, Sebastian, Eldrick, River, and march up to Toddsfeld. Perhaps he'll listen to us then. Perhaps. That decrepit old miser will fall is is ultimately has self preservation at heart. He won't move against you if he thinks that you're powerful and strong. And you may just have have to to not ask him, but you might have to tell him. Mm -hmm. You might have to be ready to do it. I I hate what's happening right now. It's wasn't my intention to. Is it your fingernails? Is that that too. Uh, th- I really want them to grow back, and mm. I'm missing three teeth now. Yeah. <laughs> I, can- I, I'm starting to look a little like Duke von Fritz. No, I won't go that far. But <laughs> no, Pluto. I, I would be lying if I said I didn't miss living in a barn in Tierhaven and dealing with ducks. It's um, it was much, much more quaint of a situation to be in, and I took care of the people around me, and they took care of me. I thought I could do good stepping into this role. I thought I could do good by my people. But... No, you are. That's the thing. You're, you're, you know, it would be such a shame if you were just, what, you slept in a barn? You what? You Yeah, for, for years I lived in a barn. It was years, great. You couldn't afford it. You couldn't just ask to sleep in something. Look, it's like. I enjoyed the barn. It was my own place. I didn't want to sleep in the house with 10 children. And <laughs> it was not a big house. The barn I'll had a lot sleep. more room. I'll sleep in here then and you can sleep in the. Uh barracks with the yeah, look the point is is that you're you're on the right track and and you are going to face opposition like veo said you're not going to please everyone but I you know. need to focus on the majority and i think the big thing that i take away from your visitor is we haven't been listening to the people we've listened to each other and we've listened to the high nobles and we've listened to our powerful allies we haven't really listened to what the people want. And so maybe we need to t- slow down, take a step back and and figure out what are do we have what's you know, are we Drakenheim or is the rest of it? And I mean, I mean I mean I'm trying to think about how much I'm Drakenheim, you know? I I I'm I'm so much more Caspia. Yeah, uh, that is my home, and and you know I I do admire this place. Uh, it has been quite the challenge, and I I've I've come to really enjoy my time here, um, and I hope one day my nephew will 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 stand uh, beneath it. But he needs to look up to you, and he needs to see a strong ruler. Eric speaks up and says, "If I may, there are many pieces moving, my king." The, there is the matter of the nobility here. There's the Illyrians. There's also the matter of, well, Sebastian Crow and what Wrath and your other friend Rudy Whitaker were sent off to do. And just to get, because all of this could be for moot if we can't get all of the seals of Drakenheim back together again and actually crown you properly as our king. 
all of the we can't neglect those pieces either. And then there's the matter of Lucretia Matthias too. But does crowning me king without the blessing of the Dukes of Westmar cause more problems? It does, but it also gives us a very powerful bargaining chip. If you're actually wearing the crown of Westmar, you have the power of the throne literally behind you. And that's a pretty indisputable asset to have. Well, maybe it comes down to those who won't support you without it. We get the crown and... Well, but if we had all the pieces in place to crown you, well, a coronation would be an ideal opportunity to call all the dukes. Hmm. Yeah. To Castle Draken? Perhaps not to Castle Draken, but right. somewhere else, part of the pro profession. Perhaps a arrange some sort of ceremonial event, get them to swear their oaths of fealty again, secure their vassalage, and, because I will say, the very least, if those are renewed, then we can actually start getting some income and levies from them, and that would be useful for the times ahead. It does bring back the what to do about Lucretia Matthias, too. Right. Well, mm. the problem is that we sent our friends to go retrieve a relic that we were going to possibly trade to Lucretia Matthias in exchange for one of the seals of Drakenheim, but it seems she's gotten word that my alliance with Illyria is not forthcoming to her ideals of uh, her new religion. Mm. And so she might be reluctant to part with the seal of Drakenheim after all. We'll have to see what happens when it comes down to that. Hopefully, Sebastian and Wrath and Veo, uh, Sebastian, Wrath, and Rudy have succeeded in their mission and at least gotten the other bargaining chip back. If they do have the uh, one of the other relics of St. Vitruvio to trade back, then... Maybe Lucretia Matthias will keep her word, and then we'll take the conflict from there. I have full... scouting, right? They're just going on a scouting mission. I think they were sure. just going on a yeah, scouting they were just mission. Check things out. We'll probably They're... go in and like deal with it. I have mm. full faith that our stealthy team has some good intel and has stayed out of trouble. Mm -hmm. Very well then. Perhaps we should just bring the Cretia Matthias in, hand her over to the Silver Order. That alone would at least get them off our backs. Could be what we need to do at least to stay the signing of an agreement that isn't in our favor. They have every reason to ally with us because we want to destroy the Delirium Heart just as they want to destroy the Delirium Heart. They want so much more than just destroying delirium. You I know, know that. But at the core of it all, that's their main goal. And so agreeing to that is more than enough to form an alliance because our goals are the same. Now, mm. in terms of owing them, perhaps instead of owing them, if we, if our nation hands over Lucretia Matthias, what sort of ransom can we ask for for delivering such a high-profile target? Perhaps the money that they would want owed could instead be payment for securing their number one problem. Eric I says, I, I'm not sure that... Uh, Lucretia Matthias is worth a lot, but I'm not sure the Illyrians would necessarily pay that much for her. Well, it was a thought. Hmm. A good one, nonetheless. So what's your next move? Gotta finish this duel. 
We got to think right. of something bigger to kill. We've got to reach out to some of these dukes, the ones we like, the ones that don't like us, or at least Wilhelm. Yeah. You're really like, you really divide a room. Some people love you, you <laughs> save your life and stuff, and then some people just want to murder you. Uh, yeah. I... How's, that, how's, that, how's that feel? The only place you're going to find anything bigger than Big Linda is either in the castle or the crater. And the castle could be a great opportunity to uh, they would visit an old family member. Um, we have an inn there, and it could be a way to uh, also just do some house cleaning before uh, you take it over. What do you say, Wilhelm? I need two days. <laughs> <laughs> As you said, more more teeth. That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, give me two days to prepare. Uh, and by prepare, I mean grow my fingernails and teeth and toenails back. Mm -hmm. um, and I will be right as rain to go venturing into the terrible, terrible depths of that city. Are we long resting? I think you guys are going to be taking up all, all your things. I think with that as well, Wilhelm, I think it's time to, for you to gain a level. Uh, what do you, hey. you know, level, level Wilhelm up to level 12? Yeah. Well earned. Um, I already did. And <laughs> I took resilient constitution because at level 12, rogues get another feet or ability score increase i took resilient constitution mainly because here's here's my here's my through line mm -hmm. after getting contaminated yet again and surviving and an assassination attempt well contaminated and surviving uh wilhelm has toughened up a bit he yeah. he's growing more resistant to the things going on so not only is my con save much better uh, but also, my hit points are now 87, which is substantially better than they were before. Uh, so just need to patch that up and make Wilhelm a little more survivable. And so, shoring up those, <laughs> those constitution saves and my hit points sounded like the best idea. Well, I think in that respect, perhaps you've lost <laughs> significantly less fingernails from this round of contamination. And... Over your next couple rests up, um, you also are able to avail yourselves of the services of the apothecaries who per cast purge contamination on all of you, and it is a very unpleasant evening for the lot of you getting your contamination purged. Don't need to go into the gory details, but it, uh, it's it's not pretty coming out. Um, and with that, I think that um, we shall leave it there for this evening but i wonder maybe it... let's uh let's have some high level conversation here should we perhaps come back to sebastian rudy and wrath next week or should we continue with these three what do you what do you three think what do you feel like they, they, we gotta what do you think i i do think that could we leave them i think that we could switch over to the other party do, what do you what do you guys think uh, finish the duel and then move over, or we could just go straight over. Right. The, I, I'm trying to remember where we where we <laughs> last left our hero. They're they, they're still in the barrio. They haven't come back barrio. yet. So yeah. you know we could have them come back and and just to it. have to go all the way back to Liberio again. I guess they. I don't know. But or we can finish the duel next week. What do you think? We'll yeah, talk that, this week. Seems... Okay. Yeah. All right. I, I don't feel ready to make that decision. I feel like discussion needs to happen and I could talk about it for hours. All righty. Yeah. Well, in it that will. case, I think that this is a good place to end things off yeah. for, for this evening. That feels good. Um, and with that, a big thank you to all three of you, Jill, Kelly, and Joe for playing tonight. <laughs> And um, a huge thank you to Kyle for all the wonderful things he does behind the scenes. 
Thank you, Kyle. You're amazing. You're handsome. And I love you, Kyle. <laughs> um, also, a huge thank you to Monty Martin, our dungeon master, for stressing me the heck out uh, with his political intrigue. And uh, who thought it was a good idea to play a character that was going to be king? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> no, but it's so many, so many curveballs that actually I love the drama that's happening. So thank you so much for just piling the drama on. And we'll see how it all goes as I fumble through political decisions. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, amazing. And uh, as always in our game tonight, we are uh, using a uh, a variety of incredible assets produced by talented artists. You can use them in your uh, home games too. They've graciously given us permission uh, to use them in our stream games. And we encourage you to go out and support some of these amazing creators uh, tonight. The big feature was uh, roll 20 um, with the, uh, to share the maps, but uh, most importantly, tabletop audio. So please uh, go out and check them out. And don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store. You can find all of your favorite Dutch dude shirts, uh, shadows of Drakenheim. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, troll. Troll killer. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Check out bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. Our videos and live streams are made possible because we have an amazing Patreon community. If you enjoy the work that we do on YouTube, Twitch, and elsewhere, please consider becoming a supporter of our show by checking us out at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes or in the links below. We also have a phenomenal Discord community that is exclusive for our patrons. So join us on Discord to chat with us about the um, current Kickstarter that's happening, mm -hmm. as well as all things Drakenheim, all things D&D, &D, and you can just chat with us. Uh, you can chat with me specifically about the uh, mess that I find myself in with my character. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'll be, I'll be in there all week being like, what do? And so come join our Discord and, uh, and and just chat with us about anything you feel like. Kelly and I also post new videos every other Tuesday and every Thursday on our YouTube channel. Check us out, youtube.com slash Dungeon Dudes. And be sure to join us live next Tuesday when we record the campaign live on Twitch. Check us out from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. Don't forget to check the video episodes of the show on YouTube or check us out as an audio-only podcast as well. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you next time in Drakenheim.